The opinions expressed by Keith Elliott and his guest do not necessarily reflect the official policy, position, or opinions of REMAX, REMAX Olympic Realty, the National Association of Realtors, Virginia Association of Realtors, or the Greater Piedmont Area Association of Realtors. The opinions shared on this show are not intended to be a forecast of real estate market patterns, future events, or a guarantee of future results, and may be subject to change based on other conditions and economic factors. Hi, I'm Keith, and today I'll be talking to you about listing and selling your home as a for sale by owner. Now because there's so much I could go into on this topic, I'm just going to focus on a brief overview and give you my perspective. I'm not going to be going into the nitty gritty details, nor will I be spending too much time on the risky areas. Just a brief overview. Now there are many reasons why a homeowner would want to list their home for sale by owner. First off, they believe that they can save money by not hiring a real estate agent and then when the property sells they won't have to pay the listing agent commission. If they have an expensive home it could be a sizable commission. I understand. If the homeowner can sell their home themselves to a private party, which some do, they won't have to pay the selling agent commission either. I understand. If you're considering selling your home for sale by owner, here are some key points I believe you should have a thorough understanding of. Number one, you should research comparable sales in your area for like properties. This means all homes in a three mile radius of your home or in your zip code that have the same number of bedrooms and baths and any other relevant aspects. You should go back at least three months in your search, longer if there are no comparables available. You should also be able to make financial adjustments and allowances for any known differences between your home and the others that have sold. For instance, if you have a pool, you're going to have to make an adjustment for that. Number two, in order to price your home appropriately, you should get out and tour homes in your area so that you truly know your market. I'm not talking about sitting at home in a comfortable chair, surfing the internet in your den. You actually have to get out and see your competition. Number three, if you're short on time and you're not able to come up with a realistic price of what your property is worth, uh, you should consider hiring a hiring a real estate appraiser to come out and perform the service for you. They can give you a report that will provide a great deal of information. Number four, you should find out just how much your closing costs are going to be and any other related fees. Also calculate how much extra it may cost you if you have to pay the buyer's closing costs. Okay, so you've come up with a price that you're comfortable listing your home at. The next step is to prepare your home for showings. Now you'll want to have your home thoroughly cleaned and decluttered. All pictures, all junk, put away. At this time, you should also figure out how you want to handle showings. Keep in mind, no one will buy your home if, they cannot, if you cannot make it available for them to see. So make sure you have the means and the time available for others to access your home. If your schedule is flexible, this shouldn't be a problem. Let's talk about marketing and advertising now. You should have several methods in mind for advertising your home and depending on the number of sources and types of distribution you want to use, uh, you should have enough money set aside for these costs as well as a long-term plan in case you cannot sell your home right away. It's going to cost you money the longer it stays on the market. Since you'll be entirely on your own, you should be familiar with real estate law, real estate contracts and how to interpret them. This includes all terms and conditions as well as any other additional handwritten clauses the buyer might choose to throw in. Now you should also be knowledgeable enough uh, to any other options that would benefit you as the seller, not to mention how to negotiate the best overall win-win scenario. If there are any other known defects in your home, you should disclose those immediately to the buyer. Also tell him or her what you agree to fix or replace prior to closing. Um, if you accept any earnest money or down payment in accordance to the real estate contract, you should, you should know how to handle those funds because if the deal falls through, you're going to have to return that money. It doesn't mean it's yours. You can't go on a skiing vacation somewhere. You have to return it. And as far as choosing a settlement company to conduct your closing at, you could either identify a company on your own or you could go with the one suggested by the buyer. Now, 
Assuming everything goes well, at closing, you should be prepared to hand over the keys to the new owner. All your stuff is out, you're moving on, they're moving in. Now just a few words of caution here. If you're not willing to negotiate the price, the term, or the conditions of the deal, you may be wasting your time and setting yourself up for failure. Also, if the buyer has considerable real estate knowledge or agent representation, expect them to exploit any weaknesses you have, known or unknown. After all, you've chosen to put yourself at this disadvantage by deciding to sell your home on your own. Well, in closing, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to watch this video. I hope it gave you some insight on what you'll need to know if you decide to list your home for sale by owner. If you have any stories or personal experiences on this topic, I would love to hear from you. Feel free to send me a personal message or leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.